speech, we will now move to our final two speakers on the motion. And I'd like to call the fourth speaker in proposition, Tom Holland. Tom Holland is an English writer and historian who has published best-selling books on topics including classical and medieval history and on the origins of Islam, so he will be able to look east in his speech. Um, his most recent book, Dominion, is critically acclaimed at the moment, and Tom, the floor is yours. <laughs> I, I apologise for the hesitancy there. Uh, that reflects the fact that, as people on both sides of this debate have been pointing out regularly, this venue, this occasion, is, is not a Sparta-friendly environment at all. Um, if, the, if it were, I could just stand here and say, we won the Peloponnesian War, get over it, vote Sparta, and then I could sit down. <laughs> and if that didn't resolve it, then I could challenge these ladies and gentlemen to a competitive whipping outside. <laughs> but is a competitive whipping on the menu? No. <laughs> because this is massively, massively freighted in favour of Athenians. This is a place that, that favours people who stand up and give great flowery speeches. That's not the Spartan way. It favours people who are massively intellectual, who spend their whole time studying. That's not the Spartan way. It's a place that kind of encourages people to, to dress up in ludicrous costumes. And on this point, a huge kudos here to Paul for sticking it up for Spartan, dressing down in an authentically Laconian way. <laughs> that's, the, that's the Spartan manner. And I feel ambivalent about this, because as you can probably tell from my grotesquely over-the-top bow tie, I, I'm not a natural Spartan. In fact, um, this has been hanging over me like a kind of shadow, knowing that I'm going to have to stand up and make the case for Sparta, when, when, when really uh, I've always basically thought of myself as a kind of uh, Athenian. Uh, I, I'm a complete wuss. I, I would have hated being a Spartan. Um, I would much rather have just kind of hung around at symposia, much more fun, and I totally accept that. But then this morning, um, I, I kind of woke up thinking, oh God, I've got to go to Cambridge and make the case for Sparta, how am I going to do this? And then I switched on the news, and it was all coronavirus. And it was non-stop bickering, blabbering, terror palpable sense that nobody had the faintest idea what to do, and they were running around shouting loudly about it. And I thought, how very unlike the Spartans. The Spartan message is to hold the line. Do not give in to alarm. Do not give in to disgraceful rout, the lines of the great Spartan poet, Tateus. And as Olvi has mentioned, and I, I'm very grateful to her for making this point in favor of Sparta, you would not want to be in Athens during a massive coronavirus outbreak. You know that that, would be, that plague would be coming up the long walls. And the fact that in Sparta, the only city in Greece that calls both fellow Greeks and non-Greeks foreigners, you'd be properly secure. And I reflected on all this and thought, actually, maybe Sparta does have something to say for it. Now, we've heard some very, very uh, eloquent um, illustrations of why it would be great to be an Athenian. You could die of plague so that someone could get to write a play. <laughs> you could masturbate in public. You could get your head torn off by some philosopher just to make him seem clever. All of these things I agree and accept are things that Athens offers, Sparta doesn't. But what Sparta offers us is the chance actually to get outside the 21st century. We've heard very, very, very accurate and, and um, articulate account 
of what, from the perspective of 21st century liberal Britain, makes the Spartans seem terrifying, alien. And so they were. But the question is not, you know, what by the standards of 21st century liberalism was the better city, Athens or Sparta. It's specifically this house would rather be a Spartan than an Athenian. And obviously, if you are a Spartan, you are not going to be a 21st century liberal. Wittgenstein famously said that if a lion could speak, we would not be able to understand him. But to be a Spartan, if you were a Spartan, you might have some sense of what it was to be an apex predator. You might be a lion, but I think more probably you would be a wolf. The name of Lycurgus, the legendary founder, a man so respected, not just by the Spartans, but by people across Greece, that even Apollo was unclear whether he was a man or a god. The meaning of Lycurgus is wolf worker, the man who, if you like, makes wolves out of humans. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what being a Spartan would offer you. It would give you a chance to escape your 21st century progressive liberal identity. It would give you the chance to feel the excitement of having blood in your nostrils. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, it would only give you that chance if you weren't left out in a hillside to die as a baby. Thank you very much. I'm coming to this. Okay, so the perfect illustration of this. If you have grown up, if you are a Spartan, if you're conscient, conscious enough, if you're a baby, you don't measure up, of course, you get chucked down a ravine. This is what everybody knows. <laughs> that's I, clearly bad. I'm not going to argue that's a good thing. But if you're a baby, you're not going to be conscious of being a Spartan. If you are conscious <laughs> of being a Spartan... <laughs> If you're a little Spartan boy, and you're a little Spartan girl, and you're aware of yourselves as Spartans, you know that you have passed that equivalent <laughs> of the Oxbridge entry exam. <laughs> You've made the grade. You are part of an elite. And so all this talk about how awful it is for helots and things, yes, it is. But that's the fun of being <laughs> a Spartan. That's the whole point. And we've heard how great it is to be a girl. You know, you're, you're a Spartan girl, you get to look at all the boys naked and laugh at them, and then you get to slap your buttocks with your heels, and you get to exercise naked, not to kind of rap, not because it's salacious, but because it's good, it's good for you, it'll make you great at sport. All of these things are wonderful, because if you're a Spartan girl, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of St. Trinian's. You're, you're, you're into sport. That's kind of the thing you're into. You love it. You have the chance to run around naked doing sport. You are the kind of person who would love that. And if you're a Spartan boy, you are growing up in a system that gives you a sense of commonality, a sense of comradeship, a sense of belonging to the greater city in the world. And yet, at the same time, you have the chance to prove that you're the best. And you are all at Cambridge. Tell me you don't secretly want that chance. <laughs> of course you do. You grow up, you're a little boy, you get the chance to uh, perhaps to, to join the Cryptea. You know, rather than coming to Cambridge, you get, join the Cryptea, you have the chance to slide over the Tagatus Mountains, slit the throat of a helot, feel his warm blood spilling out. <laughs> this is thrilling. <laughs> This is thrilling. And all this wussy, liberal hand-wringing, oh, they had slaves. <laughs> if you've made the grade in the Cryptea, then you have a chance of joining the 300, the bodyguard that looks after the Spartan king, one of, one of the two Spartan kings. And you really know you've made it. If you're a warrior who's made that, then you've really, really achieved something. And as I say, you are going to enjoy that. And you are going to enjoy going to war. And you're going to enjoy wearing your beautiful red cloak so that the blood won't show up. And you're going to enjoy having your beautifully burnished shield and your mighty crest waving. 
And you're going to enjoy the fact that you can form a shield wall and no one is going to run away. And you're going to enjoy the fact that you will go to a battlefield and the very strong likelihood is that the people facing you will be so terrified that they will literally shit themselves <laughs> and run away. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why it is better to be a Spartan than an Athenian. Because the bottom line, it's more fun. <laughs> Thank you.